Sage Wanderer here, and welcome to episode two of Uncovering the Dark Side. Now, I apologize for the robe, but I kind of just threw this together at the last minute because a little bit of this episode is going to be venting for me. You know, there's an old saying, be careful what you ask for, you might get it. And, you know, I I have been uncovering the dark side for a very long time. This this, ep or this uh, series I'm doing really is a culmination of a lifetime of study. And sometimes you just encounter stories or, or elements or angles to the dark side that disturb you at such a, a deep level that sometimes you just have to stop and take a breath. You know, um, yeah, I'm really making this video impromptu this morning because I stumbled across just a little piece of truth that honestly just made me sick to my stomach. And, um, you know, I, and I'm, the more I dig, the darker it gets. You know, the more you dig, the further you, you get into this muck. When you're looking for the devil, you will find him. And down in these crevices, there, there are things going on in the world that shouldn't be going on. There are things going on in the world that if you really sat if you really, if you could look at it with the eyes of God for a moment and see it all going on, all of the evil happening at once, all the bad things that are going on in the world, if you could truly see through all the facades and all the deception and see the actual crimes, how many of those are committed daily against mainly children. That's the thing that bothers me the most, the crimes against children. It's mind-numbing. It's disturbing to say the least. I, I don't think the human mind could take the knowledge of the truth of what is really going on in the world today and what has historically gone on down through the ages. And this series is about connecting the dots. And I will continue to, t to connect the historical dots of evil. What I'm trying to do in this video series is show you how all of these different elements of the boogeymen, all of the different organizations that are corrupted have come together to create this new world order of chaos, this new world, this new disorder world, this new upside down bizarro world. And, um, but as I look at things like, you know, is it the Catholic Church? You know, is it, is it the papacy? Or is it Freemasonry, Luciferians? Or is it, the Zionists? Is it uh, the, you know, who's the bad guy? Is it uh, Islam? You know, where's the source of evil? And, you know, I've decided that it's all of these things, all of these corrupt things. And I'm going to start connecting the dots. And I've been putting off, I was going to put off this this episode, but I I saw an interview with a woman telling her story today. And it moved me so that I just had to go ahead and move to this video and tell you that to me, the biggest thing that connects all of the evil in the world, the biggest thing that they all have in common, every one of the organizations I've just mentioned, whether it's the Luciferians, the Freemasons, especially in Hollywood and in, and in the, and in the uh, political realm, what connects them to Islam, connects Islam to the... Uh, you know, what is the connecting thing to Zionism and, and, and you know, the, the, what they call the synagogue of Satan? I'll get more into that as we, as we uncover some of the historical stuff. But what I found that they all have in common, take doctrine and ideology and religion and just put it over here. What, what as an outside observ observer did I identify immediately that they all had a serious problem with? Pedophilia. Pedophilia. The use, the abuse, the destruction of children. This is what all of the evil in the world has in common. This is actually their goal. They want to kill the babies. They want to hurt the babies. They want the babies to never be born. There's a Bob Marley line that's always haunting. And I know it doesn't necessarily mean this, uh, I don't think, in the song. But I believe it's Bob Marley. And the line is... Kill it before it grows. You got to kill it before it grows. See, this is what the true nature of evil is. It wants us all dead, 
But see, human beings are more powerful than you think. We have more spiritual power than most of us are willing or able to yield. And we have more physical power than many of us think. Uh, especially a fully grown adult male uh, or female, either one. You know, a, a grown adult is extremely powerful in this world. And um, one person can change the world. And the enemy knows that. And so they want to get us while we're weak preferably in the womb or even before we're born. So the one thing that they all have in common is pedophilia, child abuse, child neglect, child imprisonment, child slavery, abortion, infant, infant side, the using of children. Let me give you some examples. Well, let me tell the story that so disturbed me first. This is a little rambling, but I think it's going to be a good video anyway uh, because it's coming from a, a position of emotion and true feelings. But the video I saw this morning that disturbed me so was a video by a woman named Julia Holcomb who was Steven Tyler from Aerosmith's um, fiance, you want to call it that? Now, this was another time. It was further back in the past. Uh, I think Julia Holcomb now is a, is a woman about my age. So this would have been a number of years ago. Um, but she was Steven Tyler's teenage girlfriend. That she was an underage girl that he picked up and put on tour with him. That he'd managed some way to bribe some judge to become her legal guardian. So he was the legal guardian of an underage teenage girl while he was a grown man on the road with his band. And I would suspect this would have been in the early 80s. So, uh, you know, Steven Tyler would have already been, you know, probably a 30-year-old man. And um, he, um, I've just listened to her first-hand account, and I believe her. I completely believe her. She's not acting. After all these years, this story still tears her up. But she was in love with Steven Tyler, and he used and abused her and knocked her up on the road and got her pregnant. And um, he had told her he was going to marry her and um, that they were going to have a family together. And he actually even took her to meet his family, who very much did not approve of his decision to uh, drag his knocked up a road, you know, teenage girlfriend into the house and proclaim he was going to marry her and he wanted the family uh, heir heirloom jewelry to do it with. And um, so when that didn't work out so good and he got, she got rejected by his family, they had a big fight. He took her back to the apartment that they shared in Boston and dumped her. A uh, teenage girl pregnant. I think she was 15 or 16 when she was pregnant. And left her alone with no money, no driver's license, and no connections with anyone there in Boston. And he, um, um, and he went on the road. And, you know, after two weeks, she started, you know, asking him over the phone for food. You know, she needed grocery money. She needs to go grocery shopping. She's out of everything. And he says he'll have a close friend, a former bandmate, come by there in Boston and bring her some food the next day. So he comes the next day and she lets him in. And that's the last thing she remembers until she wakes up in a fire with the entire uh, apartment burning. And... Um, and she, ironically, I mean, amazingly, was able to hide. She couldn't get out because whoever set the fire uh, put her on the second story and then torched the only way out. And there were two ways out. It was just old brownstone. So there was a, a front door and a back door down from the second story. But he built the fire. He started the fire on both of the stairwells. So there was no alternative fire escape or big window to get out of in that old style home because they figured you would just come down the stairs with two sets of stairs. And he set the fire on both sets of stairs. She hid in a empty fireplace because she'd heard that that was a good place to hide in a fire and that you had a chance of surviving. And then she woke up again in the hospital where while she was still in the hospital, Stephen Tyler demanded that she have an abortion and get rid of the baby and said that uh, if she didn't get rid of the baby, he was going to dump her, that she had to choose between him or the baby. So then she has what's called a saline abortion where they stick a needle in her stomach and flood her uh, uterus with saline and kill her fetus, kill her baby. 
but then she has to give birth to this and now she's like six months pregnant this to this baby who's already dead so she has to go into labor for six hours and give birth to a dead baby and steven tyler is there while she's going through the birthing process of uh, birthing this uh dead baby and he's doing cocaine and offering it to her and this is where i jump up and stop the the video and i didn't even watch the rest because i just couldn't take it anymore doing what i do you should pray for me you guys should pray for me because i mean i didn't go looking for that video i stumbled across it in my research but it did to me highlight the attitude i mean just the vision of him sacrificing this girl's firstborn child on the altar of abortion this late-term abortion while doing cocaine and offering it to her in a hospital to a underage girl that he had somehow plucked from society and gained control, legal control over. He was her guardian and her abuser and her captor. And she loved him. <laughs> this is the dark, evil side of, of the Luciferians. And it really hurts me because I was a huge fan of this guy. Like, I've watched his music for years. I watched him as a judge on these shows. Uh, I think his daughter is a beautiful person. And, um, you know, I've just, I just been a... Hey, like anybody else, I guess I did the rock star idolization of this guy. And uh, I, I just... I can't believe how awful he is. Yeah, okay, so whatever. He was on drugs. One thing I found out about drugs and alcohol... If it brings out something evil in you, it's because something evil was already in you. I know lots of people who were drug addicts that didn't sacrifice people's firstborn children. <sighs> but this is the thread, you know, that they all have in common. Well, I mean, we all know about what's going on with Islam. That within the Islamic belief system is this idea that you can have sex with children. And that sex with young boys is not really sex, and it's not rape. And sex with young girls is okay. We've all heard this, and it's and you get you get called a a, a, a you know an anti-Islamic person if you say that. But see, I'm going to throw them all under the bus. That's what this is all about. We're finding evil wherever it is. And if your religion tells you it's okay to have sex with little girls and little boys. That's pedophilia. This is America. We don't tolerate that. And, um, you know, I'm going to stand up against it. I don't care what religious faith you are. You can't hide behind... You pedophiles can't hide behind religion and get away from us. We're not going to... We're not going to... Call me a, a bigot all you want. I'm going to stand up for these babies. And if you get in my way, you're going to get boot prints on your face. Because I'll walk right over you. I'm going to walk right over you to save these kids. Right now, as I make this video, uh, there's a big uh, contention on, you know, going on in the world about a story coming out of Tucson, Arizona. This story is uh, about a group of veterans who go around looking for homeless vets to try to bring them in out of the cold. It's vets looking out for vets. Uh, veterans on patrol I think is what it's called and they stumbled across what looked like a homeless camp but they found what what looks to be and experts seem to agree uh, it seems to be underground bunkers that are basically little pillbox holding cells for children inside of these little tanks buried in the desert in Arizona they found children's toys food for children like you know Captain Crunch and Lucky Charms and uh, children's toys but they also found uh, evidences of what's called a rape tree where they would tie these little children up to the tree and restrain their arms and rape them and then stuff them back in these underground holes. And right now, as I speak, there's a militia protecting this site because they say that the city of Tucson Police Department is trying to cover it up. And now the feds apparently are en route there to answer this armed militia as more armed militia swarm to Tucson, Arizona to, uh, to protect this site from being covered up because they believe they've uncovered a a channel, a, a area of the, uh, of the borders area near Tucson where coyotes are bringing up families and they're kidnapping one of their children and telling them if you want them back it's going to cost you this much so go get a job and work for a while we're going to hold on to your kid and you can buy her, her or him back in some future, at some future time and in the meantime they, they sell them out to pedophiles 
and they rape them and put them back in these holes all the time. And that this is happening in the American desert of the Southwest, according to what is being reported on the internet, and that there very well could be a Bundy Ranch-style armed conflict coming as the feds try to make this militia stand down and relinquish this, this, um, uh, this crime scene, really. And, you know, it may turn out to be nothing. This could turn out to be a big thing. So, you know, this use of children is, to me, the earmark of evil. It is the signature of evil. In the Talmud, and, you know, this goes back to the synagogue of Satan concept, and that the Talmud is not the Bible. You know, I'm going to do a whole section on the Talmud. But there... In the Talmud, it tells these people that they can have sex with babies under the age of three years old. And it doesn't even take away their virginity. And it doesn't really mean anything because they're little and they won't remember it. So it's not a crime or a sin. So you can go ahead and, and use little babies under three. Now, you shouldn't do it if they're over three. But if they're over three and you, and you do it in a unnatural way, like in some other way than traditional intercourse... I'm not going to say it. You figure it out. But that doesn't count either. That You can do that to kids as well, and that's no big deal. That's in the Talmud. And just for you people that might be uh, you know, Christian Zionists and, and, uh, and don't want to face the truth about it, uh, the Talmud also says that Jesus um, is in hell, burning in human excrement, being boiled for eternity in human excrement. This is what the Talmud says about Jesus Christ. Look it up. It's in there. Look it up. The Talmud is the, really is what modern uh, Jews follow more than, uh, than even the Torah. The, the, the Talmud is the interpretation of the Torah. So the Talmud is probably the thing they do more, you know. But look into, look into what the actual rabbis believe uh, concerning the topic of underage children and pedophilia. Now, do I have to bring up the Catholic Church and, and, the, and the Roman problem? That within Roman Catholic, with the Roman Catholic Church has been this, this just absolute widespread use of children in their own congregation, sexual use of young boys, that this, that the altar boy thing, do I even need to bring that up? Haven't we been talking about that for like the last 25 years or 30 years or 40 years? That it's been going on, still going on. Now we're uncovering that it's going on, that they're at the highest level, the Catholic Church is trafficking in children. You know, all of the all of the elements that I've talked about are all starting to come together now, aren't they? Is it the Illuminati? Well, you know, we know how the Luciferians feel about babies. <laughs> I mean, those of us in the truther movement are starting to call these Luciferians baby eaters. That they, they have a bloodlust for children and for abortion and child sacrifice. It all goes back to Baal. It all goes back to the, the owl uh, idol and the bull idol of Moloch. Uh, it all goes back to the ancient Babylonian paganism. There are groups of people who have kept this pagan religion alive. This evil, child-killing, child-stealing demonic religion and it has infiltrated the catholic church it has infiltrated judaism through the through the leadership through the rabbis it has infiltrated and taken over islam from the ground up it has infiltrated and taken over christianity from the inside out it is uh, infiltrated and taken over hollywood and the movies or you could say that that was organically grown by them for them about them and they're that's them drawing you into the sexualization of children this is the truth this is the real truth i may get my channel shut down for saying it but the problem is pedophilia it's not so much the problem as a symptom of the babylonian religion this religion that goes back to antiquity, the religion that hates children, the religion that wants to eat our babies, the dragon that waits for the child to be born so it can suck it up from revelations. I mean, what's more people hating than to hate children? Because children are our future. We are all children grown up. We are all both parents and children as we age and watch our children become parents. For me, the battle of good and evil is the protection of innocence. 
if you hate on this video, if you give me a thumbs down on this video, you're a pedophile. Really, you are. Because that's what this video is about. You want to know who the devil is? They're the ones that hate the babies. They're the ones that don't love innocence. They're the ones that want to use it and destroy it and trample it under their feet. I don't know what else to say. I'm going to continue to uncover the dark side. But every rock I pull up underneath, you know what I find when I get to the core of it? Another freaking pedophile.